Hey folks, it is the Nutty Knife Guy. I hope you guys all had a good Thanksgiving. We're actually having ours tomorrow because my brother could not be here on Thursday. What I have for you today is something that I normally would not buy for myself because it's a double-edged dagger and I don't really don't like double-edged daggers. I think they universally have weak tips. Did a whole video on that. You can go find it. And it has a bunch of serrations on it. And I hate serrations. But I found the Schrade SCHF44LS. I guess they also call it the needle knife. A very good deal on Amazon for under $20. I think when these first came out that they were at least $30. i am thinking closer to 40 uh, 440 HC steel if I recall I'll check that and let you know for sure uh, now the reason I bought this is because it's basically a Schrade knockoff of the Gerber Mark II and the Gerber Mark II of course is a legend uh, in American fighting knives developed for Vietnam for a uh, developed for use for, for our troops in Vietnam uh, and uh, it's still very popular I do not have one in the collection I have handled a couple and I tell you the truth when it comes to the handling and the design I am not a huge fan but it is an American icon it's an American classic when it comes to fighting knives so, I saw this, and this is a very similar design. It's different, of course. And it was inexpensive, and I thought, well, if you get a, a, a Mark II for the collection, at least you should have some idea. Of, you know, really take the time to get an idea of its pros and cons and things like that. But for a knife that I really wasn't probably ever going to use, and it was going to go into the collection to one day be inherited by my beloved nephew, I wanted to get an idea of how much fun it would be and as I said I found this sub twenty dollars on Amazon so I grabbed it. Uh, now I have handled a Mark II, a buddy of mine had one and I think I remember fondling one in a store one day. Um, in some ways I like this better. Uh, the, this, uh, this grip at least has some texture on it. The Mark II is an all aluminum handle which in the jungles of Vietnam would be fine but in the sub-zero temperatures of an Ohio winter that aluminum would get cold enough if it was out in sub-zero temperatures for a long period of time uh, you could actually touch it with bare skin and uh, leave some skin on the handle uh, as I said I am not a fan of double-edged anything because the tip is weak it's just when you have two thin sharp edges coming together at the tip there's just not a lot of meat there, there's not a lot of metal so I don't like them and I really really hate serrations but as I said this was kind of a test run for a Mark II and the Mark II is something that you should just have in a collection if you're an American knife collector uh, the grip on this is better than the Mark II though it does have some te texturing the aluminum grip on the Mark II has some texturing but it's aluminum and if it's, it's slippery to begin with if your hands are wet or something like that with sweat or something it gets really 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 slippery. Uh, it has serrations which I'm going to attempt to do a test on. Uh, my thing about serrations for a fighting knife is that they tend to get caught in fabric. I have found that denim is, a, is especially good at catching serrations so I'm not a fan but we'll see how they perform. Now this knife is obviously thrust centric which is which means it's designed to stab. Um, now my thing about that is because it's amazing that the the double-edged knives are usually stab oriented because they're as I said their tips tend to be weak and if you hit bone instead of the squishy parts on somebody that you're fighting lizard man zombie ninja of course uh, you're gonna lose the tip and this one does not have a lot of cutting edge except at the tip 
so draw cuts you have to if you're going to do a draw cut you've got to use the serrations and they almost will in my opinion will almost certainly get caught in clothing this knife is extraordinarily light it is nimble it's very nice to handle but it doesn't have enough mass to do any kind of uh, chopping with and as I said the push cuts or the draw cuts are screwed up by the serrations my feeling is is that this what the way you could really effectively use this thing is in snap cuts just bap like so it's, it did come very sharp I don't know if I don't have my, I've been testing knives lately so I don't know if I have any hair on my arm did that pull up anything it did but I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera I still can't tell if you can see it on camera because I'm looking at my little itty bitty dinky screen on the camera. Uh, we'll see what happens when I get it when I get it edited and on a screen on a bigger screen. All right, so so a flick cut could actually do a lot of damage here. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think you could use this as any kind of a camping or a trail knife, this is designed for fighting other human beings at close range. Or lizard men, zombie ninjas at close range. And if you do fight and if you do fight human beings, let it be in a defensive nature. Uh, virtually useless for anything else. I don't even know if I'm going to try to do vampire deterrence with this or not. But uh, we'll see. I am going to take this out to the war post. I've got some stuff planned. So uh, we'll see you, but first thing, uh, for I think it was like $18, uh, it's a nice little uh, piece of my collection. It does come with a, a very nice looking leather sheath. It holds the knife well, very nice fitting, and it is well constructed. My problem with it is that this is for a tactical knife, and I think this is a boot knife sheath and I think this is too long for most boots you need big long cowboy boots or something of the same length to use this as a boot knife and it's also pretty long to be carried on the belt and be sticking up here guys and I'm saying this to all uh, knife manufacturers if you're going to make a, a, type, uh, a knife of a tactical nature Molly compatible. Make it so you can carry it like this. Make it so you can carry it like that. But don't make it so you can only carry it like that in a boot. Not good. Uh, so, gonna go out to the war post. And I will see you there. Okay, folks. Got a couple targets up here. I put some cloth on the water bottle so I can see what those serrations will do against cloth. And I was talking about carrying a sheath. I just have this clipped on the outside of my pants pocket and it rides pretty well. So we'll see what we'll do against the cloth. So much for a cloth, I'll have to get that out of my neighbor's yard. Uh, but uh, it did keep it from biting very deep with this thing. Let's see what happens without the cloth. Yeah, well, it's not just a lack of serration. This thing just doesn't have a whole lot of mass. Yeah, that was a pretty decent slash. But this doesn't have the mass for slashing. Let's try those flick cuts I was talking about. Okay. Now the thrusting, of course, that's no problem. making sure I'm in frame here. Now, 
just for the straight warp post. Okay. These serrations don't seem to really do much for chopping at all or even slashing because they're so far back on the blade. Honestly, they're more decoration than anything else as far as I'm concerned. Okay, let's try the thrust. You do get good penetration. Water got water on the handle and the blade slick. I mean the handle slick. But of course that went in pretty deep. And there you go. I just broke my knife. And I guess that's pretty much it. Maybe I'll grind this back to a point. But I think you can call that a colossal fail for a weapon that's designed to be thrust. Go downstairs and I'll see you for the wrap up. Well, there you have it folks. That's about a what quarter of an inch snapped right off. Now I did deliberately twist it a little bit to test the tip. But it's not like I was doing this, it was just barely and it's broken and it's not necessarily the quality of the Schrade company that is in doubt here it's just the, des the general design weakness of a double-edged dagger now you're saying well I'm throwing it I'm putting it into pressure treated wood and this is designed for squishy stuff but the thing of it is the squishy stuff in question lizard men zombie ninjas for instance have hard things holding up squishy stuff and you could hit those and they're going to be moving and it's going to be twisted and chances are you're going to wind up doing having this kind of action if you hit bone and this broke I'm not surprised what I am probably going to do is either use a grinder or a file and reprofile it down so I still have a useful knife somewhat useful for the collection but you can't say anything but this, this, say anything but this failed and it failed pretty miserably. I was not treating it that roughly. As for the slashes, there's only one really decent one. And I think that was here. Take off my glasses so I can see a little better. Yeah. There was only one really decent one. The flick cuts worked well because the point went in first. It was almost like a flicking stab. And you got. But it. Uh, and of course, the thrusting against something that, you know, like this was okay. But uh, this is pro. Except for the, the obvious, like, uh, ones that I knew were kind of going to be crappy. And I just bought them for their looks. When it comes from a, from a fairly uh, knives from fairly reputable companies, uh, this is one of the biggest disappointments in a long time. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say about it. It is designed for thrusting, and if you were to thrust and hit a rib of a lizard man zombie ninja, or the sternum of a lizard man zombie ninja, chances are this is what you would have got. I was not twerking this thing that hard. And to tell you the truth, even if I hadn't grabbed it and torqued it, I think if I had kept going with the thrust, it would have probably be broken anyway. Uh, it doesn't handle well when it's hitting. It tends to turn in the hand. The handle does get slippery when wet. Uh, build as a tactical knife that you, and that's what they're, they're building it. You can go, they made their own video about it. That you're supposed to be, that an, a police officer or a SWAT guy or a special operator is supposed to defend it, depend his, uh, eh, uh, protect his life with and depend on for that. I think there's a reason that you don't see too many shields carrying shrades in general. 
uh, because they would prefer higher end knives. Well, understandably, their life depends on it. But they're, they're building this as a tactical knife, and Schrade, uh, at best, this is a collecting knife. There is no excuse for this kind of failure on a knife that's built as a tactical knife. Uh, that's really all I can... What else is there to say, folks? I mean, it's 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 plain. Uh, you have a weapon that's significantly less effective now. And I would dare say would probably break again. So, there you go. I would call this a potentially catastrophic failure if this happened. Uh, and he calls into question what would happen if I continued with the testing. So, I am not going to send you off with a broken blade. I will get out a blade that's not broken. This is a new Kershaw I picked up not too long ago and I will probably do a review on it. But, I will leave you with my usual admonishment to draw your blades only in just purpose. Sheathe them only in honor. Only with honor. And to remember that without knives, life would be dull and pointless. Please like, share, and subscribe. That really makes me happy and it helps me out. And I bid you good day.